Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and today we have the review of Ubuntu 17.04. And this quite possibly could be the last uh, the last review I do of Ubuntu that has Unity as the default desktop. As many of you know, if you've been watching the uh, the news around Canonical, the parent company of Ubuntu, starting with the 18.04 release, which will happen this time next year, they will be going to the GNOME desktop as the default desktop environment. So we have one more release between now and then. What desktop environment that one will be it's still kind of up in the air I haven't seen any news that uh, at least as of right now they really haven't said what uh, what desktop environment that one is going to be so this quite possibly could be the last time we see unity as the default desktop now while I'm on that subject I will tell you I'm gonna have a full video on you know kinda of my thoughts on the changeover and you know what could have been and maybe where the direction they're going and all that kinda of stuff uh, I'll leave a link to that video down below and uh, I hope to get that video done this afternoon so uh, I should be able to post it about the same time as I post this video uh, or or this review so anyway let's get on with the review now I will I'm, I'm just gonna start out by saying I am going to focus this review on what is new with uh, Ubuntu 17.04 um, and which to be quite honest is not a lot uh, personally I think for most users you should either stick with Ubuntu 16.04 or if you're a new user you should install 1604 um, just because it is the long-term support release uh, you know you're going to with 1604 you have the you have uh, support all the way up until uh, 2021 uh, whereas this is uh, it's an intermediate release it is not supported uh, uh, for for very long so uh, unless there is some compelling reason why you got to have 17.04 I would go with 1604 um, just because of that that long-term uh, support but anyway taking a look at what we got here if you look at the desktop you know it's essentially what we have been seeing for the the Ubuntu unity desktop since uh, uh, since at least uh, 12.04 you know so that's uh, you know five years yeah appearance wise it really hasn't changed that much you see the wallpapers a little bit different uh, and they they kind of tweak them a little bit as the years go by but really it's the same kind of theme same uh, orientation I guess you could say um, so once again it it stays pretty familiar and uh, not a whole lot of change there but I think that's kind of a good thing when it is when it is uh, you know you've got a big a big um, a big distribution like Ubuntu, uh, I think its primary its primary distribution should be very stable. Um, you know, not having a lot of earth-shattering changes, at least as far as how it looks, how it functions, that sort of thing. So, um, you know, kind of going back to what's going to happen in 18.04, um, changing the the main desktop environment uh, may be a little rocky. Oh, we'll see. But anyway, as far as stuff that is new, most of it is under the hood. It's stuff that you really can't see that much. Um, one of the things is uh, kernel 4.10. Obviously, you can't see the kernel change. Performance-wise, you will probably see the change, um, <clears throat> depending on how new your system is um, and how new your uh, I guess you could say accessories or peripheries are you know your printers and that sort of thing uh, you could see new improvement with those um, depending on the model and all that um, and also with the newer kernel um, it will it will allow you to work with the newer Mesa stack uh, for for um, for graphics and uh, um, uh, there's better memory use on uh, for some of the newer CPUs so uh, lots of good stuff but once again it's not something that you can really see 
Um, let me take a look at my notes here. Probably the one that thing that I I thought was uh, most significant with this release is we are no longer using a swap partition. We are now using swap files, and uh, uh, you know Windows has used has used um, uh, swap files for a while. Um, the swap partition, you know, it kind of dates back to the time when you had a computer that uh, you had one or two gigs of RAM, maybe less. Um, and you had this partition to use as swap for when you ran out of uh, when you ran out of RAM or you know for putting putting your computer to sleep that sort of thing. Today, you know, I'm running a machine with 16 gigabytes of RAM. Um, I've got quite a few friends that have machines with 32 gigabytes or even more of RAM. Okay, that is, a, 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 since you want a swap area to be roughly equivalent to the amount of RAM that you have, uh, reserving 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes of RAM or, or 32 gigabytes of space on your hard drive as a swap area, I mean, that's a lot of area. There's a lot of files that you can store in there. Even if you're just looking at, say, movies, you know, uh, an MP4 most of the time, even if it's a high definition, it may be two gigabytes or less. I mean, that's like 16 movies that you could have in that amount of space if you got a 32 gigabyte or uh, yeah, 32 gigabytes of RAM. So going with the swap files, <clears throat> um, you're looking at uh, at two gigabytes or less of uh, of space that's going to be used up by those swap files, and it's not a dedicated space. Um, it, you know, it's uh, the 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 swap area. It made sense at the time that uh, uh, that that technology or that idea came around. Uh, today, probably not so much. So I kind of like this move. There's probably pluses and minuses of uh, you know swap file versus swap partition, um, but uh, uh, you know at least at least in my mind. I like the idea of going with the swap files. Another behind the scenes thing that uh, a lot of people will probably appreciate is driverless printing. Now if you're not familiar with driverless printing, basically there is a newer uh, protocol out there called IPP Everywhere and uh, essentially you will be able to, uh, you know, uh, when you install Ubuntu, you will pull up your uh, your printer dialog box and boom, it will already be connected and set up and ready to go for printing from that uh, that IPP compatible printer. Unfortunately, I cannot demonstrate that my computer or my yeah not my computer but my printer is a few years old and uh, it does not support that feature, so really can't demonstrate that. But uh, if you go and and check on YouTube, there are quite a few videos of uh, of. of different YouTubers showing this this feature um, go and check out quids ups channel he has a video showing uh, showing uh, this feature um, it's definitely quick and easy now while I'm on the subject of printers I will say that at least in my experience traditionally Ubuntu and its derivatives have been uh, the best distribution uh, or distributions if you're looking at the der derivatives uh, as far as setting up printers. Now I've, I've generally been with uh, HP printers um, so you know other other brands of printers they may not have fared so well as far as setting it up but uh, uh, at least for me uh, setting up printers has uh, has always been best on Ubuntu at least compared to other distributions. Um, now uh, once it, and once again, I've always been with HP printers, but I will say that even on other distributions, once I got the printer set up, I I had no issues or anything like that. Um, you know, printers were always supported and everything, um, but the installation and setup was much quicker on uh, on Ubuntu. Well, you know what? While we're talking about, it, I'll just go and set up my printer because I have not done that yet. There's printers right there. Let me pull it up. Popped up on my other screen so I don't have anything configured yet and just click add and it's a networked printer so I'll just come down here to network you see where it, 
and it's popped up right there HP Office Jet Pro one thing I have found on uh, on Ubuntu is that uh, this uh, printer dialog box when you're setting it up it does seem to lag just a little bit so click on that and I'll go to HP Linux imaging and printing forward take a second to search for the drivers it'll find the drivers and download them and yes I have the duplexer installed forward apply sure let's print a test page and it is printing my test page so like I said very uh, I've always found that the HP printers have been easy to set up and and, and whatnot on uh, on Ubuntu at least in the past few years um, you know back in the early days of Ubuntu maybe not quite as much but at least the past five years or so um, yeah there's my there's my uh, test page um, but anyway, at least the past five years or so, it's been real easy setting up the HP printers. As far as software applications goes, we have basically the same uh, the same suite or the same list of applications that we've had in, in the past few releases. Uh, we've got newer versions, but it's the same software. So like uh, Firefox, we have been upgraded to, uh, I believe, Firefox 52. On uh, LibreOffice, we are up to uh, LibreOffice 5.3, so on and so forth. So uh, nothing, you know, new or earth-shattering there, other than we're on newer versions of the same software. Um, Performance-wise, I have not run into any issues. I haven't had any crashes or anything like that. Uh, as far as how snappy the speed, that kind of thing, it lags a little bit. Uh, as compared to say Ubuntu 16.04 and uh, and 16.10, however, um, my testing partition is on a mechanical hard drive, so uh, you know I'm used to uh, I'm used to seeing things run on an SSD. That's what my main desktop is. That's what my all, I've got in all my laptops. So you are going to see a speed difference there as a uh, you know mechanical hard drive versus a SSD so the little bit of lag that I'm seeing it is entirely possible that uh, that is what I'm what I am seeing um, now I know some other reviewers that uh, I've seen their videos on on YouTube and whatnot and they have said that <clears throat> uh, 1704 seems to lag a little bit um, and it's entirely possible um, it may be the graphics drivers that are for their particular card that are packaged with uh, with Ubuntu 17.04 you know just because one computer is having uh, performance issues on uh, <clears throat> you know say Ubuntu 17.04 does not mean that another one will because all the hardware is not going to necessarily be the same you know one may have a NVIDIA graphics driver the other may be using Intel graphics uh, another one may be using AMD so um, different hardware different drivers may have different performance as far as that goes and I think that pretty much kind of finishes up the video you know uh, as far as you know should you go to 17.04 I really, you know, for most people, I don't see a reason to do it. If you're already on 16.04, I would stay there. You know, if you want the newer kernel, you can go and install the newer kernel. If you want the newer, um, <clears throat> say, LibreOffice, you can install a PPA that will get you that newer LibreOffice. And that 16.04 is supported for five years. This is a short-term release. If you're on 1610, yeah, go ahead and do it just because uh, you know you're going to get more support life out of this release as opposed to the older 16.10 release. But if you're on 16.04, the the LTS stick with it. There's not really a good reason to come here. Um, and that's not to say that this is a bad release. Uh, there's just really not anything of significance 
that would that would make me say, oh man, I got to get off a of 1604 and get 17.04 right away. Just there's not a compelling reason to do it. And uh, I guess that's about it. Uh, like I said, I will have a video up um, as soon as possible. Kind of my ideas, comments, all that on the change from Unity to GNOME for the main desktop. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Be sure to check out my other uh, 17.04 reviews. I'll try to get some links up to those so you can check those out. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And I hope to see you all on my next video. Thanks a lot.